What's up guys, this is Valash from Racing Brick. In today's video I will show you all details about the latest LEGO Technic remote control set, the 42129 Mercedes-Benz Zetros trial track. Oh look, here it is! An impressive descent on a 45 degree ramp. What? Coming down is not impressive? Ah, uh, see what you did, you get offended. Anyway, let's see the details. On the front of the box you can see the Zetros in action on a dusty trial track, that was probably not the best idea in the world, I will tell you later why. We see the Control Plus logo and the apps interface as well. On the back of the box there are some feature details and a photo of the real track with a few impressive numbers. As you can see on the side there are three large motors, two for drive and one for steering, a medium motor which is called simple medium linear motor in lego.com language and a Technic Hub. Let's open the box. Besides the bags we have a smaller white cardboard box inside. Honestly, I was too excited about the set, so I forgot to count the bags. As you see in the manual, the building process is split into six phases. Despite the branding, we get zero extra information about the original model, unfortunately. Here is the part list, feel free to pause and check the details. One interesting new piece from the set is the tire. The diameter is 81mm, it fits between the tire of the 4x4 Extreme Off-Roader and the one from the Jeep Wrangler. We also get a lot of the 11 module long flip flop beams, similar to the ones I showed you in the heavy duty tow truck. I hope you already saw that video, if you missed it then the link is in the top right corner. Now let's start building. The first item to build is the support for the two driving L motors, apparently the whole truck is built around them. The central differential is added, driven by the two motors with a 1 to 1 gear ratio. There's a drive ring added with the orange wave selector. That axle has a physical stopper that limits the rotation between the two positions of the drive ring to lock and unlock the central differential. We start to build the gearbox controlling the differentials, and here comes the medium motor, used for the first time in a Technic set. Most of the gears added so far are connected directly to the medium motor, which will control the differential lock. I use the standalone 88015 battery box to show quickly how it will work, please note that this is not the Technic hub that comes with the set. As you see, there are two outputs from the motor at the moment, both geared down significantly, and they will go through the two heavy-duty clutch gears. The purpose of the motor is only to control the differential lock. Here is the new reinforced sliding CV joint. It's slightly longer than I expected, as I thought the length of the sliding part is two modules. As it turns out, it can swallow a three-module long axle, so it actually allows two modules travel distance while still holding the axle's end. The upper output of the medium motor is now connected with these two gears to the orange wave selector that locks the central differential. On the other side you can see that the shaft with the wave selector can only turn 90 degrees, so the differential is either locked or the driving ring is in the central neutral position since there is nothing on the other side. Here is the effect of the motor on the central differential. If the differential is unlocked, the front and rear drive shafts can turn independently. If I turn on the medium motor, it will rotate the orange wave selector that locks the differential. After turning 90 degrees, the clutch is engaged, so it will be used by the app for a very minimal time. With the lock differential, you can see that the front and rear drive shafts rotate together. The whole assembly gets a sturdy cage, it is really required to withstand the forces of the gearbox switch. Here is a second shaft added on this side, it goes through the other clutch gear. It will be used to engage the differential lock on the rear axle. Here are the longer flip-flop beams introduced in the off-road buggy, allowing some interesting new connection types as you can see here. After a little cable management, the chassis gets extended with panels and beams. It's interesting to see the panels being used as a structural element in the build instead of the beam-only setup, and there are also angled beams used to distribute the forces. Here is our build at the end of bag 1. The structure was extended in both directions, here you can see the radiator fence, so this will be the front I guess. We can also see the pieces that will hold the front axle. This is the second appearance of these wheel hubs after the 4x4 Extreme Offroader. There's an interesting layer structure with half beams to support the wheel hubs. Here comes the new shorter 11 module long flip flop beam. As you see it allows us to basically custom build support frames. This is the locking mechanism for the rear differential. When it is open, the two wheels can rotate independently. Once it is closed, the differential acts as a single axle and the wheels rotate together. A pretty interesting way of securing that red toe ball in place, the extra friction from the bar makes it very difficult to remove. Suddenly we got a whole bunch of gears here and two shafts on the top of the axle. 
The first one will drive the differentials through the series of gears here, and then with that black 22 bevel gear that is perpendicular to the red gear of the differential. The other shaft will control the differential lock. The axle is secured with some extra pieces and starts to look like a tank now. Well, it is not just the look, it really feels as solid as a rock. I hope I don't have to take it apart anytime soon. Time to connect it to the chassis. There's an interesting warning in the manual. You have to make sure the shafts are aligned to be in sync with each other on both ends of the axles to ensure a smooth rotation. It's not the easiest to make it work. Then comes this assembly, another tricky situation to solve. The toe is properly connected, we need to make sure the springs are also in a correct position. A surprising way to attach the shock absorbers, since there's no axle holder, the axle can simply slide out. I'm sure there will be an additional part holding it in place from the outside. Well, here they are. These panels will keep the axles in place. This is the end of back two. Do you remember when I said I hope I won't have to take the rear axle apart? Well, I was left here with this little fellow. And no, it cannot be an extra part. Luckily, after looking around, I found a place and it was easily accessible, but well, I have to triple check every step going forward. Here is the front axle with the differential in the center. Since this one is not lockable, the structure is very different. It will be interesting to see how these wheel hubs are used for a steered live axle compared to, for example, the 4x4 Extreme Offroader. The structure will be very robust. You can see the steering rack and the Ackerman steering geometry. Here comes the steering motor. After a few reinforcements, time to attach the front axle to the chassis. The shafts also need to be connected, and the manual highlights again the importance of the correct phasing. The shock absorbers are also attached, and this is the point where all motors are connected. What does it mean? Time to add all wheels, the hub, and see how it works. At this time of the recording, I don't have access to the Control Plus app yet, so I created a custom profile in the Powered Up app. Two buttons control the differential lock, it is locked now. This is the speed we get, and with the locked central differential you can see that the vehicle moves even if one axle is lifted. If I unlock the differential, then with the rear axle in the air, it won't move anymore. Here we build the front bumper, it has some interesting linkages and triangles to form the angled side sections. This panel goes in place and then we can mount it on the chassis, and we also have the cute rubber duck in place. Back 4 starts with the fake engine cover, instead of a fake engine, we still have to wait until we get a functional engine in a Control Plus labeled set. After the air filter and the radiator, time to add the 3 seats. Oh yeah, I totally forgot to remove the wheels after the test, but we all know that they have to be on as soon as possible, right? So now it's officially time to add the hub as well. A cool little mechanism to lock the hub in place, without any pins connected it will be good for a quick battery swap. Talking about quick swaps, what about those mysterious screws on the press photos? Well, this half has none of them, just the good old snapple lid. So was it a mistake, they used a prototype or something? Well, the only thing we know so far is that this set comes with the old style battery cover for sure, but as usual there's no official word about future products or changes. Ok, Lego, this was a pretty cheap move. I mean, I can't recall when we had a sticker on a 1x1 round tile last time, they usually come printed. I always become nervous and mess it up, just like this time. It was also kind of expected and understandable considering the structure, but now it's confirmed, no functional steering wheel. We build some things here with lots of tiny parts, and suddenly it becomes one of the doors. I like the rear view mirror setup with a half stud offset, always the small details. The other side is done as well, time to mount them on the chassis, and here comes the rest of the engine cover. The roof has some nice phone handsets at the front and an antenna which will be the first item to lose when we roll over with the truck, because well, that's what happens with trial trucks, right? Well, hopefully this roof rack will protect it. Oh, by the way, it's not just a roof rack, more like a roll cage. We get side protection as well. Here is the dashboard with the windshield wipers, they look pretty cool. The dashboard sticker on the other hand is a bit weird as it seems to be squeezed. Maybe the original dashboard is angled and the sticker tries to represent that, but looks funny to be honest. The last item from back 4 is the snorkel. Back 5 has surprisingly few amount of pieces, we will build the hood. I forgot to mention in my previous video, but this set marks the glorious return of the lightsaber bar piece in dark bluish grey. I did not realize why it is a big deal, until I checked the prices on Brickling, 6 euros for a single piece, wow! Better sell your stocks guys quickly. 
A pretty cool and interesting way to mount a system piece to a Technic assembly, isn't it? We have, by the way, a big printed Mercedes logo here, so again, I don't know why we couldn't get one for the steering wheel. I'm supposed to have a grey piece, but I have a black one. Can you see where I made the mistake? This is why LEGO has color coding for the similar pieces, to help folks like me. Time to mount the hood. It's a bit tricky, but if it's done, we only have back six left. We are focusing on the rear section now, edit mud flaps, the rear lights, and now working on the bed. This is the less exciting part of the build, some beam stacking with tons of pins and a whole bunch of stickers. More details being added here and there, and then we slowly but surely complete the rear section. This is the official moment to add the wheels, and the front ones get these funny wheel covers made of these strange gears, the rear ones are more conventional. As a final touch we build the flags for the race, and we are done. So, here is our completed Mercedes-Benz Zetros trial track. I think the overall look is great, this thing looks mean and has a good amount of details. There were tons of criticism about the 4x4 setup and a lot of people said that the truck is way too long, the wheels are too small, and the whole thing looks like this little guy here. Well, if we open the Mercedes-Benz truck's website, there's a nice drawing of the truck. Let's put a photo of the LEGO version over it, set the proper scale and we will quickly see the truth. So folks, as I see the wheelbase and size is correct, but the truck actually sits higher than the original, I guess that's a lift for the trial version. The overall proportions are fine, but again the original has an even longer bed. Of course Mercedes will make you any version you like, so I would say the comments about the proportions being all wrong are simply, well, all wrong. A quick overview about the manual functions and accessories. We have an opening hood with the fake fake engines cover and the radiator fan, the opening doors, windshield wipers, fire extinguishers at the back and the four flags. The engine cover can be opened to check how the differential lock works, and that's pretty much all. Time to fire up the Control Plus app. Please note that this is a beta version, functions might still change and I won't comment on the performance or any glitches at this point. We connect the hub, there's a quick calibration at the first occasion, and here we have our controls. First thing I don't like, the position of steering and throttle controls. I prefer steering on the right and throttle on the left, and as you know, the Control Plus layout cannot be changed. Luckily, we have the Powered Up app with the ability to create a custom controller setup, so you will find a tutorial about this set as well soon. Link to my Powered Up content is in the top right corner. The interface is not too complicated. Besides the basic controls, we have a switch to select between the open and close differential position. We also have a horn. Thank God that's not a fart sound this time. Gauges telemetry data from the hub and this display in the middle that's supposed to show your record incline in degrees, I could not reset the value. If we slide the screen to the right, there's an alternative control screen. You can regulate speed and steering with the touchscreen and the differential lock is operated by the button in the bottom right corner. In the menu we have the usual control plus challenges, I won't show them. If you've seen one, then you saw them all. You need to complete tasks like a 45 degree climb, but you will need to build your own track for it. There's another hidden feature in the menu that was not advertised anywhere, and I think it is much more interesting. Check this out. This is actually the very first use of augmented reality by LEGO that I found interesting and useful. You can point the camera at your truck, and boom, you have a digital version overlay on it, and with a tap on this button you can actually take a look inside and observe the drivetrain. Wow! But wait, there's more. You can turn it on and see how things look inside. How freaking cool is this? Once you scanned your model, you can go back to the fully digital screen and check the model there as well. I could not make this version work without scanning the truck first. I hope LEGO will make it accessible without the sets so people who don't have the truck yet can also check out the details. I love the feature. It's a brilliant way to take a sneak peek inside and understand how the drivetrain works. A few hints or explanations here and there could make it even better, but that's something very easy to add going forward. So, time to test the truck. As you saw, the speed is, well, not significant. It is quite difficult to compare to the rally car, and it's slower than my 5-minute gear swap modified 4x4 Extreme Offroader as well. The climbing, however, is quite impressive. This is a 45 degrees ramp. The modified Extreme Offroader cannot climb it as it does not have enough traction. The Zetros has issues at the bottom, but if we approach the ramp sideways, then it can successfully climb it. That's quite a performance. Mm. 
Now let's see the Duplo challenge. With the open differentials, once the wheels don't touch the ground, the truck stops, quite understandable. If we engage the differential lock, the situation changes quickly, all the power becomes available. Yes, it's actually too powerful, so I will have to hold the plate. Unfortunately, the ground clearance is not that great, a little change in the course can have consequences. I will really need to strip down this beast to see the true potential. As you see, the ground clearance under the axle is not much, the situation is much better under the center, but the problem will always be with the stuff that sticks out or hangs down. The turning radius is unfortunately pretty poor. This could be a way to show the difference between the locked and unlocked differentials, but on these tiles there's virtually no difference, the wheels simply slip. I tried to test it on the carpet, but the difference is still very small, there's no weight on the rear, so there's no traction. Let's add 2 kg of weight and see what happens. Now there's a bit more visible difference, the turning radius becomes worse with log differentials. It's quite a stretch as normally you won't drive under these circumstances, so the benefit of the open differential remains virtual most of the time. Of course, there might be an increased stress on the parts, so I recommend driving with the open differentials when you are not climbing, but it's hard to demonstrate the benefits. So, what are my impressions so far? It's a very well-built machine with some unique features we've never seen in an official LEGO Technic set. I really like the look, the abilities, very impressive. I think as a trial truck it might have too many things on it that can be potentially knocked off, but I understand that the look is also important. I still miss some locks here and there, the hood might open by itself during a descent, the doors can open as well easily. If you want to focus on the truck trial aspect more than the look, then it's easy to remove the extra stuff and secure the floppy parts, but I think the hood is probably the weakest point that would have required an official solution. For me, the overall impression is still positive, but now a few words about why some people won't be happy with it at all. Please note, most of these come from the fact that it's a kid's toy in the first place and not a purpose-built RC machine, but I think I have to talk about this as you guys will say that I'm only highlighting the good stuff. First of all, this is not a trial truck built for outdoor challenges. LEGO does not recommend you to bring it outdoors, and the reason is super simple. The differential locking mechanism and every functioning rotating part is exposed to the elements, a little dust or some gravel goes in it and it will jam or even worse, the plastic gets damaged easily. Of course, you are free to do anything you feel like with it, and yes, I will obviously take it outside, but be warned. Another reason, the differential lock is well made I think, and it's quite unique, but with this setup honestly it does not make a big difference. The effect of the open differential is clearly visible when one of the wheels loses traction, but indoors under normal circumstances you can practically run it with closed differentials all the time. There's almost no any weight on the rear wheels and the LEGO tires won't stick at all, so the wheels simply slip a bit and correct the speed difference this way. Again, super easy to understand, LEGO don't want stuff to break or wear out quickly if you don't pay attention to it. The shock absorbers also seem to be too hard, a softer setup would be more realistic, ideally you should see more flexible axles, but then you would risk the wheels touching the body or the chassis. But these are all complaints from a hardcore LEGO Technic RC enthusiast perspective. As a kid's toy that needs to meet tons of different needs, I think it is a well-balanced set, has an impressive performance, it's a great demonstration of locking differentials and fun to drive around. Now a few words about the price. It is around 300 euros or dollars, which is a lot of money in most of the countries, but I will rather try to put it in perspective by comparing it to other LEGO sets. Since the pricing varies by country, to make it simple, I will use the US price. A direct competitor can be the 4x4 Extreme Offroader, that one goes from $250. Only 50 bucks cheaper, but the piece count is less than half of the Mercedes and it has less functions, so I think that makes the Zetros a better deal. I always hear opinions saying the powered up parts made the new sets incredibly expensive compared to the old ones with power functions. Well, I think memories are blurred and always seem to be nicer with time, but let's see some numbers. I think it is fair to compare some fully remote controlled power function sets with the Zetros, and there were not many of them. The 9398 4x4 crawler, released in 2012, price was $200. That's around $236 in today's money. 
That makes the set 22% cheaper than the Zetros, but it also has 38% less parts. The 42030 Volvo wheel loader, released in 2014, price was $250. The adjusted value in today's money is $286, that's only 5% cheaper than the Zetros, and it had 22% less parts. I know it's not a super exact comparison, we could try to separate and quantify the price of electric components, but for me it shows one thing. No, this set is not significantly more expensive than the Power Functions RC sets were. I don't say it is cheap, but considering LEGO's history of pricing, it is not surprising at all. Yes, you can buy a purpose-built RC truck for this amount or even for much less that probably blows it out of the water, I know. There are even nice cheap kits with metal components for a fraction of this price, so if you want an RC truck that you can drive and bash outdoors, go for those. But this is a completely different construction toy with a different purpose and it has the versatility of the building system. Now to justify the price difference of the hardware, we only need the software and control part to catch up and offer a similar flexibility and ease of use. Hint, we want proportional physical controls. So as the newest offering from the LEGO Technic RC range, I think it is a decent set. If you like the look and the abilities, and you can live with the price, I think you won't be disappointed. As a trial truck, I wish it was a bit more simplistic, with less parts to lose, and some of them more secured, but if you do something, do it with style. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know there's still very much to test and show with this set, I will have more content coming, so please give this one a thumbs up if you like it, and if you don't want to miss the upcoming cool videos with this set and the others, then don't forget to subscribe and smash the notification bell. See you next time, bye bye.